Welcome to the CEO's Open Discussions Corner at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Holliday. Today, we are continuing to focus in upon the very hot and very profitable junior mining sector. And we are welcoming to the show, Mr. Nicholas Matisic. Nicholas is the CEO and director and co-founder of an exploration company called Snowline Gold Corp. By profession, Nicholas is a geologist, and he comes from a family which has been extremely successful within the mining industry, and that is setting the stage for an incredible opportunity for investors. We are excited to have him here to explore the details of Snowline Gold. Nicholas, welcome to the show. How are you today? Great. Thank you very much for having me on. We are thrilled to have you here. So excited for this show. Now, as I mentioned, In the world of mining, there really is no one that is better positioned to launch a company than you. And I want to start off right there because you were basically born into this industry. Your dad is Paul Matisic, who is a titan, and he was surrounded by titans throughout the period in which you grew up. And so um, since exploration and discovery is part of your own personal family legacy. Talk to us a bit from the perspective of someone who actually grew up within this industry. Yeah, I, I, I growing up, both my parents are geologists. My dad worked for the BC Geological Survey uh, until he got too tired of working with the government because uh, nothing ever got done. Uh, <laughs> moved over to the private sector uh, 13 years ago. Uh, in that time, he sold six publicly traded companies, uh, recently sold Gold X Mining to Grand Columbian. Uh, but it's just been, been an incredible ride. Um, and I've been so fortunate to learn so much from and meet so many great people along the way, uh, learn how to hopefully run a company properly, uh, treat your shareholders well, and build that lasting value. Now, Nicholas, before we head into the details of Snowline Gold, I want to get your overall thoughts about some economic topics, which are pretty much driving everybody's conversation in the public today. Those topics are inflation and the possibility of hyperinflation, and now the de-dollarization, which is accelerating all throughout the world. What is your take on the world at large when it comes to money, investing, and financial security and today's economy? I think we're definitely entering an inflationary environment. There's been so much money pumped into the U.S. economy. uh, It's going to have far-ranging effects. Uh, I think some of the inflation we're seeing is more than transitory. Um, The Fed's kind of on the fence. They don't really quite know where it's going, uh, but it's starting to really affect people's lives. Even for Snowline, we're trying to buy lumber for our drill pads, and it's like many times more expensive than it was last year. Uh, It's having a real effect on people. Um, there's probably a lot of structural issues caught up in that. Um, there's been very generous unemployment benefits, um, and you're not having the same amount of workers coming back to the workforce. Um, perhaps they're perhaps it's too cushy. Um, but there's, there's a lot of, over this last pandemic year and a half, uh, there's a lot of stuff to sort of churn through. Um, and this inflation we're seeing, I think, is just one symptom of it. Right. And you mentioned the very cushy unemployment benefits. That's really incentive to stay home. I mean, yeah, that's working's hard. Uh, right. And what if you hate your job? If you hate yeah, your there's job, a ton of turnover in ooh, that, too. Right. People took a, a safe job that they continue to have. And there's so much more churn. Um, people say, oh, but rising wages like I could stay here. I could make well, 10, 20 percent more if I jump ship. So right. there's going to be there's a lot of dead weight to sort of get out of the system until we really start taking big leaps forward again. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's really interesting because the people that love their work and love their job, honestly, it really doesn't affect them. But exactly, you know, and um, so both of us sit in very, very fortunate positions in life to be doing what we love. But the fact is that most people are not in that same fortunate position. And so um, when you step back and you really take a look at this, it's kind of dangerous to say, okay, you have a job you hate. Uh, You have people at work that treat you badly. And now you're being paid a lot of money to stay home. So go back to work. You know, that's not (laughs) equation. (laughs) That's not a rational, logical path. Nicholas, how does this affect the mining sector? specifically in terms of inflation. Is this a positive or a negative when it comes to precious metals? 
I, inflation on the balance is going to be a positive uh, for gold and the precious metals uh, and commodities generally. Uh, you have the same amount of money uh, or more more money, and it's got to chase a smaller amount of goods. Uh, so the, hopefully the prices, and it's been demonstrated in the past, prices of commodities and precious metals appreciate with inflation because uh, that they still still necessary. Um, there's only so much gold and silver in the world, uh, and you got to pay for it somehow. Exactly. And um, let's go on to cryptos. I want to get your take. You know, um, a lot of people are talking and have the mindset that cryptocurrencies are going to back the financial system. And it's even starting with Bitcoin and other uh, countries in the world. But the fact is that it's so, you know, incredibly volatile. volatile. Yes. I mean, how can you possibly depend on something like that? What's your take on cryptocurrencies? I think some of the the cryptos have taken some of the shine off gold. There's a, the markets are a huge place with many different players. I think some of the more, more speculative buying has probably left gold and moved over to, to crypto. Um, but you have to have a really strong stomach to be able to put up with the volatility in crypto. I think there's a lot better fundamental drivers for, for gold and silver. Uh, and I, I, it's a hard system. It's a hard asset to base the financial system on. They're like, uh, distributed finance and some of like the, the smart record keeping. I think there's definitely opportunities for that. Um, but as it's an asset class that everyone's going to hold, I think it's going to still continue to be very speculative right. for years, do you if hold, not longer. Do you hold Bitcoin? I do not. You do not. Okay. So you're not really into the Bitcoin, Ethereum, dog, you don't, you know, you don't no, buy the dip I, when it dips. <laughs> well, like I, I've been fortunate to work with a lot of good people and I believe in the work they're doing. And I just like to have a little bit more information and, and be engaged in the investments that I make. Right, right. I think that's what causes the volatility is people mm-hmm. are not um, educated upon cryptos before they jump into them. And then when they start to fall for whatever reason, everybody jumps out and it crashes, you know, and yeah. that makes it incredibly volatile. Let's turn now to your company which of course is Snowline Gold Corp. I love that name. And um, you are focused, of course, upon exploration and discovery. Let's start off with the big picture. Tell us about Snowline Gold. Um, Snowline Gold was founded in March of this year, a relatively new company, Uh, but we have a great set of projects that have been staked over 30 years by a father-son prospecting team. It's the first time they're in a public company that can generate a lot more visibility. Um, they've been privately optioned um, about 10 years ago and they did some great work and we're, we're building upon that, some great sampling results, um, but it didn't really get the traction. Um, but with our team, with uh, our lead advisor, Paul Matissek, who's also involved in this, uh, great shareholders like Keith Newmeyer, Eric Sprott, and Quentin Henney, uh, we have a, a great technical team and shareholder base uh, and ready to take these projects to the next level. That is an amazing lineup of stockholders that you just listed off. And um, it's incredible that you have them behind you for such a new baby company, really, um, within the past couple of months or so. Talk to us about your projects, Nicholas. Talk about where they are, how many you have, because you have several, and I believe they're all in the Yukon. Yeah, uh, the Yukon, they're all, there's seven projects uh, totaling 90,000 hectares across the Yukon Territory uh, in between well, the north of Canada and Alaska. Uh, we have a cornerstone position in the Selwyn Basin where our flagship projects, Ironson and Rogue, are located. Uh, they've had a lot of work done in the past. Uh, we're fully funded for our exploration campaign, which is starting now. Uh, the drill's supposed to start turning tonight, uh, night of June 17th, uh, or hopefully tomorrow morning. Um, and we we're building on a lot of good, high quality work uh, and hopefully start getting some really impressive results to support all the, the massive regional surveys that have been done in the past. Right. It's really rich in deposits there. And something else yep. that interests me that was very prominent in your profile was your interest in taking care of the indigenous people of the Yukon and also their natural habitat. And I really want you to talk about that because that's a lot of concern when people talk about exploration and discovery, when you're going into wild areas. So talk to us about how you operate. Absolutely. Uh, Well, Scott and I, the co-founders, we're both on the younger side compared to some of our peers, but it also means we're coming with a different perspective. 
Uh, it's about building real relationships with the communities and with the First Nations and whose traditional territory we operate. And we want to make sure that we, we can be good partners and good stewards of the land as we explore and hopefully bring economic opportunities to everybody in, involved. Uh, we had our first meeting with uh, Nacho Nayak Dunn in whose traditional territory of Anderson and Roger located. Um, there's many diverse points of view in, in communities, um, but I believe there's a common thread we can all hold on to. They have other operating mines in their territory. Uh, they have a developmental corporation, that drilling company. Um, so they know how to play ball and we want to be that good partner. Uh, and as for the environment, I grew up hiking and cycling and mountain biking. And I love being outside. Um, so it's important to be able to balance the appreciation of the natural environment with being able to develop resources appropriately, uh, oh, use yeah. best practices, limit our impact, reclaim as we go, uh, and, and be good stewards. Beautiful. Um, explain to everyone who doesn't know the term reclaim in mining. Yeah, um, there's obviously disturbances when you do any type of work for drilling. Uh, you have to clear a little bit of space of brush uh, just so you can get the drill rig in there, um, have, a, have a sump. Um, so it, like, after the work is done, you've collected the core, you hopefully got fantastic results as we hoped to have. Um, you have to sort of just put it back like how it was before. Um, put the brush back on, put the topsoil back on. Um, so when you come back five, 10 years later, it doesn't look like you were there. That is such an important um, aspect to this. And that's, that's one of the things I really look at different companies and see that they're focused upon reclaiming the territory. That it's, it's essentially nature reclaiming it. You set the stage yeah. for everything to return to the way it was before. It's such an important aspect of mining, and many people leave that out. You know, you mentioned mm -hmm. Scott, and yeah. I want you to talk about your management team, but first I'd like you to mention your tickers and where you trade. Sure. We're Snowline Gold Corp, uh, SGD, on the Canadian Securities Exchange, and currently on the OTC pink sheets, SNWGF, uh, and we're very close to getting a QB listing. Uh, so it'll be much more accessible to American investors. You are really moving fast for just being formed in March. Yeah. It's very unusual. Got to make hay while the sun shines. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, I mean, if you know, but it, it comes from, to be honest, the fact that you grew up in a family that you watched all these Titans build. So you've got that instinctive know-how of like, oh, we've got that, we're going for it. Let's, this is the next step and this is the next step. And that to many people who are new to mining or who haven't grown up in that industry don't have that sort of layout of step after step after step. They're sort of figuring it out as they go. So you are really positioned. I'm excited to have you here because this is an investment that everybody needs to look at. Exploration and discovery right now are so important also to be bringing new minerals to the market. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's sort of starved for, for new opportunities in the Yukon. Um, there's a, it's a big place for Titans in the Tantina Gold uh, Belt where we have our projects. There's multiple other million ounce deposits stretching from uh, Kinross's Fort Knox in Alaska uh, down through Victoria Gold's Eagle Mine, uh, Pogo, uh, Northern Star, um, and then uh, Fort Knox, or sorry, uh, uh, Kino Hill, which is a major silver deposit. We're in this same trend. Um, so there's tons of space to expand. I think we have uh, the potential to be, be something special. Huge, huge. You have the potential to be huge because you know the territory, you know the layout, and you're starting now with such big, great backing. I want to go through those names you mentioned because people who aren't really necessarily knowledgeable within the mining industry might not um, recognize, you know, Dr. Quentin Henney or Keith Newmeyer or even your father. So um, go through a little bit of the background of each of those for investors to realize who is backing this company. Sure. Uh, Keith Newmeyer, uh, he's the CEO of First Majestic, uh, pure silver miner. Uh, he's instrumental in putting this deal together. Um, he's been, been engaged the whole way through. He's had a lot of great advice for us. He's really pleased to have him as, a, as an active shareholder for our company. Uh, he's done a lot of advocacy for us. You can check out his Twitter and make it on there sometimes. Uh, <laughs> But he's been a great person to work with, and uh, he gives us a lot of visibility. And he believes in the projects, which is why he's there. Mm -hmm. um, then we have Dr. Quentin Henney. He uh, um, has 25 years of mineral exploration. Uh, he took uh, first minings 
a spring pole project in Northern Ontario from sort of a similar level as we are uh, to a 5 million ounce uh, PA level resource. Uh, it's doing some great work at Newfound Gold's uh, Queensway project. They're getting some incredible grades, uh, 100, 200, 300 grams per ton and some drill intercepts. Um, he, kind of, he thinks we're onto something similar uh, through our Jupiter prospects. Um, so there's a, there's a lot to like here. And then we have my father, Paul Matissic. I uh, sold six publicly traded companies uh, for more than $2 billion uh, collectively. Uh, recently sold Goldex Mining to Grand Columbian for $315 million. Um, he's across commodities, across countries. Uh, he's been able to get it done in difficult places to work like Argentina. Uh, one of my first jobs, our first job out of university was working on uh, Lithium X's uh, Sol de la Vida project or Solar de Ombre. Ah, sorry. Um, there was it. Solar de Diablillos. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> two L's or actually three L's and never really sounds like that. Wow. Um, Argentines have an interesting way of pronouncing stuff. Uh, See, it's so interesting to hear you speak because people can get a real um, insight into how you know this territory, how you know mining, how you understand it on a worldwide level. But please continue, please continue. Yeah, uh, he's able to work in hard countries like Argentina. Uh, beautiful food, great barbecues. <laughs> uh, work ethic could be a little bit stronger at times and better bureaucracy and less corruption. Mm -hmm. um, but being able to work in those countries and sell, sell three companies actually in Argentina, uh, Lithium X, um, lithium one uh, and gold gold rock mining um, so he's able to, to get it done all over the place and working in country in Canada should be a piece of cake talk about a mentor that is just yeah. you know right right as everyone sits and listens to you does it put a lot of pressure on you I yeah there's big shoes to fill obviously but right. I hold myself to high standards already um, mm -hmm. I think it's great to have this person to lead and to learn from, mm -hmm. um, but sort of everyone has their own journey and you have to, to succeed for yourself right. uh, and have your own story that you write. Right. I think snow lines a big part of that first step. Beautiful. Me. Beautiful. I just want to get your perspective on that because, you know, realizing, you know, that you're coming out kind of the shadow of, you know, not just your father, but the people that surround him, you know what I mean? So here comes Nicholas, but this is fantastic. And I love that you're in the exploration and discovery portion of it. Now, um, you mentioned Scott. So, yeah. and everyone always says, it's always about the people. It's always about the management team and the people behind them. So now that we've got a big picture of who's behind you, who is actually your management team? Well, we started in March, so we're still a pretty lean company. We're really focusing on the exploration, but Scott Birdall, our chief executive officer, is a huge part of that. Uh, he, along with his father, Ron, who won Prospector of the Year in 1997, uh, initially staked the projects like over 20, 30 years ago and have worked them continuously. Um, and so he has a huge stake in, in taking them to this next level. Um, he's based in the Yukon, um, which is a huge asset for us, especially in these COVID times to have an in-territory exploration team, uh, incredibly well-educated, great field experience. Um, like I, we st I started behind the scenes in January and the first time I met him uh, was in June actually. It's spoken like, every day over Zoom on the phone, lots of messages, but to actually go meet him in person for the first time, it was great. Um, <laughs> to know that you're on the same page with another guy or both working hard for this project. Um, they really want to make this, see this succeed. Definitely, definitely. Now, is that basically who's building it? This team is yourself and Scott? Okay. Yeah, and we have um, a great board, in addition to our advisors previously mentioned. Uh, we have Dr. Craig Hart, uh, who is the founding member of the Yukon Geological Survey, uh, worked there for that, more than a decade, and was most recently the head of the Mineral Deposit Research Unit at the University of British Columbia. Uh, it's an academic industry body where like majors and explorers like us um, come with questions about how best to explore the deposits, um, to explore them effectively. Um, and he's been a huge wealth of information and we've advanced our projects. Uh, incredibly well-respected academically and within the Yukon. He's had 40 field seasons in the Yukon. He's got a cabin there. Uh, and he's like excited to get to our project uh, <laughs> to get another season in. Right. Um, furthermore, uh, we have uh, Sarah Weber, who has really helped us 
uh, deal work work collectively or collaboratively with the communities in the First Nations. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I said earlier, we're starting from a, a different point of view, um, and we have the right intention, but it's important to to use the right words and speak the right language mm-hmm. um, to make sure you're on the same page. And Sarah has been a huge asset as we've worked with the Nachunak Dun and the other First Nations in the Yukon Territory. That is so interesting that you're working with the Indigenous people. I mean, right there, I know our audience is sort of like, hmm, that's so uh, um, spiritually rich, you know what I mean, to get to know, because everybody's so, um, especially in times of COVID, you know, everybody's so separated, and um, but in just normal life, you don't normally get to um, really get in depth with people yeah. who have been there forever. You know, I want to mention something. Um, Dr. Henny, um, I saw a talk with him and um, I've actually watched several um, talks with him, but many, but on one of them, he was talking about how old these deposits are. It's really interesting that these are sometimes 200 million years old. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and bringing them out of the ground. People don't realize, you know, in geology is an extremely interesting, very historic science. It deals on very, very large time scales. Right. Like our lives are insignificant to the stuff that we're working on. It really brings it home how insignificant our lifetimes are. We think there were, you know, we're around for a yeah. you know, hundred years. <laughs> I had a really bad day. <laughs> the, world, the universe doesn't care about that. <laughs> yeah, the universe really doesn't care. Right. Um, you know, I want to talk about money now. Now that we know the people that are behind you, which is very, very important, and your management team. When you say you are fully funded, to start drilling tonight. What does that mean in terms of money? Um, what do you foresee your deposits to be worth in the future? And, and what's your overall outlook for Snow Line Gold? Uh, we raised a, a bunch of money when we launched the deal, uh, fully funded us for his exploration season, uh, hopefully putting four and a half, five million dollars into the ground. Uh, I have the first drill uh, hopefully spinning tonight. Um, if we get the results we think we're going to, maybe bring in another drill. Um, explore our base metals project, uh, Ursa, uh, just to the east. Um, but it, it gives us, the money we raise gives us a little timeline, but uh, there's always a the potential to go back to the market to, to keep these projects going. Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for investors uh, as we hopefully raise some more money in the near future. Nicholas, it's beautiful that your catalysts monetarily are already in place. What does that mean to investors? Well, we're going to be start drilling tonight or tomorrow, uh, and we're starting getting some hopefully very interesting drill results uh, over the summer. There's a lot of excitement in the Yukon, uh, and there's only so much lab capacity, but hopefully get results in four or five weeks uh, and have a steady dose of them uh, over the summer into the fall, uh, start intersecting some of these mineralized structures. Um, it's an aggressive field program this year uh, between drilling at Einersen and Rogue uh, to other sort of geological investigation, mapping, sampling, um, some geophysics, um, just to really understand this, these projects and where that mineralization is coming from. Um, but we'll have those results coming out throughout the summer. Um, and those, those are all things investors can get excited about. Yeah, yeah. And talk to us look, just briefly, how did you acquire these projects? I know there's some pretty good stories behind a couple of them. Break it down for us in a nutshell. Yeah, uh, well, they're originally staked by Ron and Scott. Um, going out in the Yukon, like you have to do it on the ground. A lot of jurisdictions, uh, you have to. You can just go online, you pick your claims, and you just, just stake them that way. But in the Yukon, you got to go get your boots on the ground. You got to hammer in the claim posts on the corner of the claims, write your little tags up, uh, and then bring all the paperwork to the mining recorder. Uh, so it's it's a really traditional way of doing it, okay, right. uh, and having and gives you a great first view of uh, the projects when you're when there's like someone like Scott doing it uh, right from the, right off the bat. No, it's, um, well, it's Scott and his father. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Ron Bertel. Okay. Those two went out, um, found the, pr- the project, staked the claims, partnered with you, bringing in your father, ironically, and this whole team of even a merchant bank coming on board with this. Yeah. Palisades Gold um, right. and right. Colin Cattell. So- It's such an interesting thing. This is, um, like I said, I love bringing baby companies with explosive potential because they have so much more um, stability as far as investors go. Many of our viewers are into cryptos. 
And, you know, they ride that wave. But boy, when you when you get some money, the best thing to do is to put it into a really solid stock with great backing that's still in its babyhood. So you've got that potential. And the last thing I want to ask you is break down that company that um, Dr. Henny compared you to so that we can kind of get a picture, a mirror picture, because I know that um, most of your estimations are going to be speculative at this point. Yeah, um, Newfound Gold, uh, they have a Queensway, the Queensway project in Newfoundland uh, on the other coast of Canada, on the far east coast, um, drilling out a, a very impressive resource. They're also backed by uh, Palisades Gold, um, but getting in, incredible intersects. Uh, so it went from a very small company to hundreds of million dollar market cap, um, and just get, based on these results and having the right players involved. Um, even closer afield, uh, you know, attack resources, which eight, nine, 10 years ago, um, in, we're about 10 kilometers away. They were in a similar position. They went up like cult of $4 after trading at like 40 cents. Um, and they're 10 kilometers away. We got the similar type of, type of mineralization. Um, so there's definitely that potential um, in Canada and well, right in our backyard. We are so excited to watch this stock as it grows. Nicholas, for um, everybody, please tell everyone where they can go to learn more about Snowline Gold, your website, and also repeat your tickers one more time for us. Sure. Uh, Snowline Gold, SGD on the Canadian Security Exchange, uh, Pink Sheet Listed, SNWGF. Uh, you can visit our website, snowlinegold.com. Uh, we also have Twitter and LinkedIn profiles. Uh, we got a lot of content out there as well. What's the last thing you'd like to leave with potential investors into this baby company that's backed by Titans? The train's about to leave the station. Uh, we're trading at an attractive price. Um, and there's just so much upside to be had right now. Once we start getting results, it, there's a potential it could really start to run. Right. Um, but with these people involved and the technical team, there's, there's some great potential here. Right. And just to break this down for everybody who might not realize that with exploration companies, it's really when you hit that deposit and you make that announcement that things really take off fast. These are companies that can take off really quick overnight when you're exploring and you're discovering and the train's about to leave the station. I think that's a beautiful commentary on it. Thank you so much for coming on this show today. We will be watching, having you back soon as this starts to develop. Nicholas? A pleasure. Wonderful. Mr. Nicholas Matisic, CEO, director, and co-founder of Snow Lion Gold Corp. For the CEO's Open Discussions Corner, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. 